Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance, and this Resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Anonymous, and here's her story. <clears throat> I have a feeling that I have been dealing with a narcissist all my life. Last month, I have looked up videos about narcissism, and a lot of people that have been around me have a lot of traits of a narcissist. I looked up videos about narcissism because of my ex-boyfriend. I don't want this story to be completely to be completely about my ex-boyfriend, so I'm going to keep this part short. I will probably write another story about the whole situation about him later. I was talking to him for eight years, and he seemed nice at first, pretty well liked. Over the years, he seemed to lack empathy for others. The most recent memory I have of him lacking empathy for others was when we were watching a video in school one day a few years ago. The video was of a girl getting slammed by a police officer and dragged through the classroom. He was hysterically laughing. His face turned red and tears were about to come, come running down his face. I told him that's not even funny. But he continued to hysterically laugh. Looking back on it three years later, that was a huge red flag that, somebody is prob that something is probably mentally wrong with him. But every time I... I told someone about the weird stuff he did, they would just be like, oh, he didn't mean it that way, he's a nice guy. He would constantly lie about little things, and when I caught him, he would always deny it ever happened. People would always say it's because he's young and doesn't know any better. He put me through the typical narcissistic cycles for years, the love bombing, devaluing, and discarding, and hoovering only for us to talk again months later. In October that I told him I think it's best we stop talking because of his new girlfriend and she probably wouldn't feel comfortable with us talking no matter how casual the conversations are. He kept pleading with me and told me that we have a close friendship and how he didn't want to lose me. He told me other BS about how close we were and how strong our bond was, right? He's just keeping you in glass in case he needs to break it. I'm shaking my head thinking about it now he told me that he knows about us he told me that he knows about us talking and doesn't have a problem with a doesn't have a problem with us speaking i kept talking to him on and off every time i didn't answer him for 2 to 3 days he would blow up my phone with multiple tasks asking where i was in january he discarded me because i asked if his girlfriend knew about us even speaking because he kept texting me at weird times i told him if you're keeping me from a, if you're keeping me from a secret, keeping me a secret from your girlfriend, we can't continue this anymore. He replied with an attitude and said, yes, I'm keeping you a secret. Okay, let's not talk anymore. I don't want her to know. I was so confused and angry because what the hell is the point of lying for so long and getting mad at me? Hours after that, I got a text from his mother telling me not to contact him. I'm guessing that's his flying monkey because she got involved for no reason. Looking back on it now, it seems so feminine for a man to get his mother involved in a situation that had nothing to do with her. I was trying to explain everything that happened, but she didn't care. And all she kept saying was, I don't know about that. All I know is what he told, he, he told me to tell you not to contact him. I'm even frustrated typing about that because it seems like she got involved because she likes drama and had nothing better to do because she's miserable with her own life. What grown woman what grown woman does whatever their son tells them to do without question? He can't solve his own problems. I'm pretty sure they started a whole smear campaign if they haven't already. The whole situation was weird to me. We're both only 20, so I'm wondering if someone that young could be a narcissist. He did more things to me before that, but I just wanted to sum that up. Here's what I'm going to say about this. <clears throat> you said you were talking to him for eight years. This is at 20 you knew he had a girlfriend, you knew it was kind of weird, and you kept doing it anyway, and kept like, oh, does she know, does she know? I got a question if you really wanted her to know, if you were playing like this competition game with him and her and the other girl at the same time, which is very possible, it's something young girls do. Now, as far as his mom calling you up, and like, like what do you expect when, when you're in a situation like this? 
That's why it's best not to not to text with a guy who's in a relationship or a married guy who says he just wants to be friends. They don't just want to be friends. Anyway, after I started watching videos of narcissism because I was so angry and confused on why would someone would even act like that, when I kept thinking about the situation obsessively because I was I was so confused and heartbroken that I got discarded like trash. But you weren't his girlfriend. You were his friend. He had a girlfriend that you that you're saying you were concerned about her knowing. And then you said, "Let's not talk." And he's like, "Okay." You were the one constantly saying we shouldn't talk, and he's hoovering you back in. So what are you upset about now? It sounds that you wanted him to choose you over her, is what you wanted. Look, there are women who who want a man who's with another girl because then you're choosing me over her and it's this competition thing. I don't know if that's what you're doing. You have to ask yourself that question. Over time, his actions reminded me of someone in my past. My mom was in a relationship with another woman 10 years ago. I'm just going to call her E. I always had an uneasy feeling around E ever since I was six years old, and I didn't know why. She was nice to me at first. I remember when I was about eight or nine years old when I started to see her bad side. I remember I was hiding my report card from them because my grades were extremely low. Of course, they found out, and then and they picked me up from my Nana's house to take me back home. I had a really bad feeling. We got home, and E said to me, You know... You all had to do, you know, all you had to do was tell the truth. We found your report card. E took my phone and my TV, which was normal. But all I remember was her getting in my face, and I was so overwhelmed, I started crying hysterically. I don't remember what she said, but all I remember was that she was so close to my face, threatening me about something. Then she took the bag of clothes I had and dumped them on the ground and told me to pick it up. My mom came in the room and laughed like it was normal and said, oh, she's crazy, and helped me hang the clothes back up on the hanger. So your mom's lesbian lover is the one abusing you here? Where's your father? Where's your father? The next morning when I heard E call me a bit, the next morning when I heard E call me a bitch, these are the exact words that came out of her mouth. She's a bitch, and I'm going to say that again louder. She's a bitch. My mom was sitting next to her and did absolutely nothing. I also remember E dragging me by my hair out of my room into the kitchen all because I left a wrapper of juice in the fridge. This is your mother's lesbian girlfriend laying hands on you and your mother does nothing about it? My mother was in the room casually watching TV. I'm sure she saw all of it and pretended not to see anything. I remember E was also also whooping me because I was caught watching TV after my bedtime when I wasn't supposed to. The other times I remember other times I remember is E bopping me on the head and splitting my face. I remember her threatening to throw me down the stairs and I told a friend what was going on in a text message. She went through my phone and told me I was lying and that didn't happen. I think the only reason E didn't beat the shit out of me every day is because she didn't want CPS to be called and wanted someone to take her anger out on. When I was younger, I looked at my mom as a savior, but now I see her, now I look at her as a covert narcissist. My mom always said how she had, we have a close relationship, but I think that's just a lie. They broke up nine years ago because E left to New York and never came back. E was the only provider of the house, so I guess that's why my mom allowed the abuse to happen because because after that allowed allowed the abuse to happen after that. I think their heads in their heads they justified it because E always got me the newest clothes, shoes, and gaming systems. 
a month after that, we had to move in with my Nana because my mom didn't have any money and she eventually got a job. My mom was so moody and passive aggressive. I remember her calling me selfish for something one time, but I can't remember what it was. I say that because thinking about about it now, she calls me selfish, but allowed all the abuse to happen to me. When my mom was with E, she said that she didn't think that beating children was right. But after she slowly started to threatening to whoop my ass. She hadn't ever beat me, so I wonder why she even threatens me for. I guess it's because I'm such a people pleaser and she knows I'm scared of everyone and uses that to her advantage. My mom got a boyfriend when I was about 12 or 13 and seemed okay at first until I started living with him when I was 17. Why does your mom just keep bringing in just random, just random fucks, huh? Just r Didn't matter, male, female, doesn't matter. I was leaving for college and everyone seemed angry at me for leaving. My mom was micromanaged. And this is how you got to deal, talk about your mom. Well, sometimes my mom dates women and sometimes she dates men. Like you want to do that when you're older? Like, don't, don't subject your child to that. And it's not even like, it's like, it's not anti-gay. It's not anti-LBGBT. It's what are you doing to your kid? One minute mommy's got a boyfriend, next minute she's got a girlfriend, the girlfriend's whooping my ass. I, I, come on, man. My mom was micromanaging everything I, I did, like always, packing up my clothes like I was two years old. One night at his house, he told me, don't lose your virginity until you graduate college. And I was weirded out by that statement and made a joke about it, but he had the most serious look on his face. Ever since then, he tried to intimidate me like like when I was at his family's house and I laughed at his brother's joke and he just stared at me trying to scare me and everyone has the and me and everyone has this stupid blank look on their face like it was normal. I have no idea how to describe this look, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, stuff got worse after that because he basically was up my ass all the time. He isn't physically abusive, but but I get this weird vibe around him. I'm not completely comfortable around him every time I'm around him, and I don't know why. Because he came into your life, at, at, started living with you at 17, this grown man. Now he's talking to you immediately about sex. He had one period where he just snapped on us for no reason. He would say a simple statement and would start yelling out of nowhere. That hasn't happened for a long time, but I still think about it. <clears throat> Recently, I got an offer from my aunt to leave the state and go live with her. She offered to pay for my driving lessons so I could get my driver's license. I'm not in school, so she offered a program where I would be working and have the school and have the school go and would pay and would have the school I would go to paid for. I told my mom about it and she said, I don't about I don't I don't know about that. You gotta plead your case to the family. Why? I was thinking, why the hell do I need to plead a case? I'm twenty years old. I told my mom's boyfriend about it, but all I remember was shaking on the phone because I was so scared on telling him for some reason. He said I was an adult and I need to look up information on on it for myself and make my own decisions but before that he kept asking why i wanted to be so far away why are you explaining yourself to somebody who's not your father why are you explaining yourself to your mother's fuck piece see this is what your mother keeps doing your mother keeps bringing fucking dick in attention or pussy in attention for you to have to explain yourself to I just think that was kind of gaslighting because why would you say I would be I would be so far away and that's 
and that it's cold where I'm moving. But then in the same breath say that I'm adult and I can make my own decisions. My Nana says she thinks it's best if I stay here and laughed and say they don't want me to leave. My Nana and my mom's boyfriend have decided they want to pay me, pay for me to go back to school here. I wouldn't be taking money off your mother's fucking boyfriend in a thousand, in a million years. In a million years. Because all your mother is doing is pushing her responsibilities off on other people. And she's using her pussy to do it. And she don't care if it's a woman getting in her pussy or a man getting in her pussy. Your mother will sell her pussy to anybody. To anyone. To anyone. She don't care. As long as she's going to get taken care of and, 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 have, and have these people fulfilling your quote-unquote needs, she'll sell her pussy to anyone. I always feel they justify this behavior because they are always buying me things. They always have. The weirdest thing about this whole situation is that my mom and niece, they'll talk on the phone all the time for hours behind her boyfriend's back, which I feel is a slap in the face to me. Like, what? It's a slap in the face to everybody. It's not. So your mother's still talking to her lesbian ex-girlfriend on the phone while her current dick pays for her, pays for her, for her life now as she talks to her old I've been thinking about buying a plane ticket to the West Coast and living with a friend I've been talking to for eight years. There's no one in my family I can trust to live with because if I tell them things that happen to me, they're just going to tell me to get over it. They thought The thought of just picking up my stuff and leaving scares me because I know they're going to be looking for me, but I'm tired of the dysfunction and I know it's never going to change. I have no idea how I'm just going to walk out the front door and leave. I have no idea where to go from here and I'm terrified. I have no else I have nowhere else to turn because abuse is common in the black community. Well, we know that. We know that. <clears throat> so another black female, another black daughter. Okay, who's being abused because of her mother's dick and attention and pussy and attention and her mother will fuck anything will fuck anything to get her bills paid when you bring stuff up like this other black people laugh and say they had it worse and it's really frustrating i'm sure this story was all over the place thank you in advance for the advice and also reading also, I hope you received your donation. And by the way, I'm thinking of asking why my mom just sat there and did nothing when I was getting abused 10 years ago. It's all about the Benjamins, baby. It's all about the Benjamins, baby. That, that, that term's becoming popular again lately. It's all about the Benjamins. Your mother will sell her pussy to anyone. I'm sure she's going to deny what happened because she pretends like I had such a privileged childhood because I always got a lot of things spent on me. I always gotten a lot as far as material things, so I wonder if I'm just being an ungrateful brat. No. Sorry I keep leaving things out, but I also wanted to add that I feel like I'm the weakest link because the boys in my family constantly disrespect their parents and no one says anything. There was another time where we were all with my grandma and she asked if my any of my if I made any friends at school. I said no and she started hysterically laughing and said how ridiculous that was knowing that I shut down when I was in college and felt depressed because I was constantly being picked on by other girls and literally had to fight one of them because one of my old roommates broke down, broke into my new dorm. My mom, my mom's boyfriend, my grandma's son all just joined in laughing. I didn't, I didn't feel like that was normal. Wait a minute. Your grandma's son, if she's your grand, so wouldn't he still be your uncle? How is he? 
After that, they pretended like everything was normal, constantly asking if I was okay. It seems like I'm the weakest link because I'm quiet, small, and have no friends around me. I don't feel comfortable around my family and don't know why, no matter how often they ask me if I'm okay or if I'm hungry. This explains a lot more about your, your the boyfriend, too, and the other girl, because you want somebody to choose you. You want somebody to choose you over someone else. And it's not because you're a bad person. It's because of this shit. I also feel bad for even thinking this way because my mom has rheumatoid arthritis and, and months was in extreme pain. Big deal. They got medication for rheumatoid arthritis. I know it can be painful. Big deal. Doesn't absolve her. Of, of selling her pussy to the highest bidder. I once walked down the stairs and heard her crying because she was in so much pain. I could barely get out. She could barely get out of bed. She ended up in the hospital for a few weeks. She's out now and walking fine. But I know. But I. But I know if I do this, I'm going to be shamed by my family and known as the daughter that walked out on her mom, mother that has multiple autoimmune diseases. Anonymous. No one cares. Who cares? It's about your life. She hasn't. She hasn't really made you a priority. Okay. She's made herself a priority, and by proxy, you've gotten some material things out of it. But what she's done is she's allowed her her fucking pussy supply to abuse you. Why? Because the borderline mother will sell her pussy to the highest bidder and they don't care who it is. That's it. That's, that, 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 that sums up your mother and your situation. So my suggestion to you is figure out how to get away, far away. If you can get to Cali, go to California, start a new life for yourself, and you can't look back and worry about what they're going to say to say about you. They're going to trash you regardless of what you do. You can't control what comes out of their mouth. You can only control your life and your future, and I suggest you do that. So I hope that helps. Thank you for your contribution and your story. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, have a private video made or a Facebook live chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you guys. Without you guys, all this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance.